Sam, we are happy to have you as a speaker at our upcoming biohacking congress in Silicon Valley on November 20th. I know that you are going to join us uh, from LA and you are going to drive. It's so amazing, nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course, it's going to be great. I'm excited to drive up there and be in the company of some wonderful other speakers that I know you're having and just, you know, kick it with the community in a small, safe space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's explain that it will be on-site event in Menlo Park, a beautiful location, but uh, for a small group, uh, for biohackers, health uh, companies, founders, and uh, investors, inventors from biotech health tech area. But we are going to live stream this all-day event for our global community. So for those who cannot join us at the location in Silicon Valley, it is still opportunity to watch live stream all day. So we invite uh, to watch our live stream, hurry up, book your spot, and uh, you can get uh, access to live stream with 50% discount by promo code BIOHACKER. And you can find the link under this video. Join us, watch us live. <laughs> Also, remind me where, can people find it through like the web or through the link on your social profile, right? Because my, I have people yeah, who are right, right. in our bio on social profile and also I will post uh, some description under this video. So yeah, 50% discount, promo code BioHacker and all day event live stream from the location uh, from Silicon Valley with more than 50 speakers. Uh, there will be uh, great um, lectures about exercise and nutrition, uh, many variable devices, measurement and uh, healthy mind and healthy sleep and so on. And also we plan a great uh, discussion with uh, the uh, very experienced inventors uh, about variable devices, health tech devices, about innovations in health tech. Our event will be opened by uh, DJ Set from famous biohacker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's exciting. It's gonna be a great little um a great little setup. So that's great. I will let my people know who are asking about it. And I'm so honored to be involved with you and the team and everyone who's gonna be speaking. Um, <laughs> yeah, let me introduce you to our audience and uh, I'm happy to introduce one of our amazing speakers, Christine Basil, yeah, founder of Very Woman Mode and Nutrition Plus Optimal Wellness. That's me, I'm so happy to be here, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Christian is health and high performance model, certified fitness trainer, uh, breeze walk and cold exposure instructor and uh, nutritionist with a focus on uh, guiding women to optimal health. Yeah, you have a great mission. You guide women to optimal health. It's so exciting and uh, you do just uh, amazing work. <laughs> you give fuel to women, it's great. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm happy to do it. I yeah. Can't. And at our biohacking congress on November 20th, so you are going to give lecture, find your very woman, ways to Optimize fitness plus fuel. It's very interesting. So I guess that our audience will get some practice advices how to optimize fitness and get uh, more power, more energy, more opportunity through this uh, uh, exercising. What, what is going to be in your lecture? Yeah, so the lecture is, it's a great question. Um, the top line insight, and the one thing that's great just to share, I think, with your audience as well, is that my business is Warrior Woman Mode, and I do work pretty exclusively with women. I do have a couple male clients that a lot of times it comes in like husbands and boyfriends and friends of current clients, but a lot of my topic will focus around really optimizing the women's physique and physiology for wellness and optimal health based on using a lot of our hormones where and when our monthly cycle affects us and just really sort of sharing the story around fitness meaning exercise and fitness as well as fuel meaning nutrition and our cycle but it's not exclusively that right there is a lot to be said around the nutrition world for optimal usage of your macronutrients like protein and fat and carbohydrates and i i 
have been sure in what I'm putting together to present for that day to touch on things that are really important components of optimizing nutrition, wellness, and fitness from a the way we progress our fitness, meaning exercise, and the way that we utilize our food and macronutrients for men and women. Because I think a ton of the biohacking community has some familiarity with it, but the more you drill down and contextually based on what your goals are, we wanna make sure that we're feeding the body the right way, that we're covering the body the right way, and that we're utilizing the hormones that we do have as women or the hormones that we have in general to be able to get the most metabolic health, metabolic flexibility, as well as just fitness programming, right? It's like, that's a lot of what biohacking is around. It's like the minimum effective dose, how can we, we can be hyper efficient with everything that we do in order to create a body and a mind that we love, right? Whether that's like in whatever shape or form that is for, for, for mm -hmm. men and women out, out there. So I'm touching on a lot of it with a focus on some components of female health in the sense that Part of the reason I do, I do what I do is because I saw a gap for so long where women weren't being spoken to about the actual powers that they have to align with their cycle. So it's twofold and uh, yeah, I'm excited to bring it there. Nice, thank you very much for this uh, short uh, introduction of your lecture. And as far as I understand, you suggest uh, to build your beauty from inside to outside, yeah, not from yeah. outside. <laughs> Like you start with the inside and you work your way out. A lot of times too, I have clients that will come and ask about fat, losing fat just to be healthier, right? To create a better body composition. And people, I think quite often think that you have to get yourself, you have to like lose some weight or lose some body fat in order to become healthy. And the reality is like, we need to get our bodies on a cellular level healthy across the board in order for everything else to sort of happen, losing weight, feeling better, having a clearer mind, having clearer sleep, as I, as I know you know. But um, yeah, so I sort of take that tactic from the inside out and, and that's the way that we build ourselves. Yeah, do you know, I think that uh, exercising help us to be not just uh, strong and beautiful, but also improve our brain cognitive uh, functions. Uh, according to the, uh, some prof professors from Harvard, uh, exercising improve our brain cognitive functions even better than uh, some games, uh, some tasks. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I think it's like Andy Huberman with a neurobiologist who's really amazing talks. I'm really paraphrasing, but he talks a lot about how this, our brains have this like duration path outcome piece, but that we are always, it's the forward motion of us that helps us continue to have the clarity of mind. And so there's a piece of that in the doing of fitness that we actually, not only are we getting sort of bliss chemicals of the brain, which is the same reason that I work with my clients on breath work and cold exposure in the ice um, or, or contrast therapy between sauna and ice is because all of that sort of builds back to sort of regulating the hormones in the brain and the body so that we feel better, so that we're clearer, so that we can continue to kind of move forward with everything that we're doing. And, and I see, you know, there are a ton of people that do work out in the biohacking community. So I'm, I, I'm not trying to generalize that we don't, but a lot of times we get real caught up in like the technology and the supplementation and all the things that we can do that are really like shortcut hacks, healthy shortcut hacks. But the thing that's like time and time again, right, is like the basics of fitness, like walk long distances, a slow pace, lift heavy objects in certain ways. Like those things are always going to build into our longevity, right? How we take care of ourselves from an exercise standpoint with like, again, the minimum effective dose or the appropriate dose for the context that you are trying to get in your, in your training life. Like somebody may be watching this conference or coming in to see the Biohacking Congress event and they're training to run a marathon. And somebody might just be like, I'm trying to keep my four kids at home in order with school. And yeah, they all have different goals. Yeah, different yeah, conditions different goals. of their health. Context, totally. So that's the really nice variant, but absolutely, Harvard says it, plenty of people, there's tons of research, it's just exercise overall and moving our bodies is always going to contribute to our longevity. It's like, and also, you know, the breathing piece, it's like lung capacity has a direct correlation to longevity. So all of those pieces and understanding how to breathe well and how to do exercise is a, is a piece of the puzzle.
So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep my presentation on time, but there's so much to say, but uh, there's a, a good focus around, you know, fueling our bodies and fitness, because I think we don't talk about it enough as a necessary piece of the puzzle of optimal wellness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you know, I am curious about uh, this uh, cold exposure, so uh, do they uh, need to be very careful with this? Is this some, um, it, could it be dangerous to uh, to start uh, this uh, cold exposure if you never did it before? Yeah, and I mean, that's like a great that. question, and I would definitely say if someone has medical conditions or mm -hmm. like if they're dealing with diabetes, anything where there's a blood flow, issue or pregnancy i don't really I, I don't like to recommend women who are pregnant it's just if it's not something and a practice you had before and then you're going through it you know during pregnancy or if you have any issues with uh, the way your body shunts blood it's really important to check with the doctor to make sure a doctor's okay with it you know so there are some contraindications of cold exposure but for the most part a generally healthy individual can get in the ice no problem because it's controlled, right? It's like you can get in and you can get right out again if you really hated it. But the object of the game is to be able to kind of boost long-term cellular health and repeated cold exposure can do that for our systems. Even better than, you know, it's not that cryo or targeted cold therapy or cold showers don't work. They definitely have a lot of benefits, but they're a bit more short-term versus the long-term benefits of getting people on the ice in a meat freezer in whatever we in whatever way we do and then just experiencing the cold water um, to reap the benefits. Yeah, do you know we will have one more speaker very focused on uh, women health. It's uh, Dasha Maximov. Uh, she will uh, give her lecture before your lecture and uh, she will be talking about uh, uh, main benchmarks uh, which is important for women. So I think your lectures uh, will work together very well and uh, our audience, our women uh, an audience uh, can get uh, great information from the uh, two lectures and uh, really that uh, can help them to start uh, building yeah, and I know Dasha. Uh, her yeah, foundation. Dasha. Yeah, yeah, she has such an expertise. Dasha really knows how to share information well, concisely, and in a way that quite often builds back to um, brain health, brain power, just cognition in general. And so that's a really nice, yeah, I'm stoked to get up there and and see her and we always like to kind of bro down together and talk yeah. about everything we're yeah talking. also kyla osterhoff also will speak uh also will give lecture yeah, so many yeah. Lecture. remember okay. the days when it was like nine out of ten of the speakers were males and now it's very it's an even nice mix of all these people it's very exciting you get all perspectives at the biohacking congress right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, we actually have a mixed audience, uh, just, uh, yeah, we will pay attention to this topic as well for women health. Yeah, it's amazing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, could you please uh, give some uh, practice advices? Because we cannot uh, leave our audience now without some practice advices. Where to start? <laughs> Exercising, breeze walk, uh, cold exposure, nutrition, how it works uh, together. Um, of course, it works together, but uh, how to start? What to do? <laughs> So I think that's a great that's a great starting point. So between now and the time that I get to see people on November 20th, I think the best things that people can do are, especially with everything that's going on with this global pandemic, we, it's like, let's get out and get moving. But the, the number one thing people can do is shut their mouth and breathe through their nose most of the time. It doesn't always hold true if you're doing a very big sort of sprint trials or something really heavy working out at the gym or mobility. But... 90% of our day, including sleeping, we can try to use our, use our nose and eliminate our mouth. Do you know a doctor of my uh, six years old daughter suggested the same and uh, they even uh, showed her some special exercise in her mouth to keep this closed every time and breathe through your nose. <laughs> it's very important for kids as well. <laughs> Super important for kids, and I more often than not, I tape my mouth closed at night when I sleep. I usually cycle it until I get comfortable, and then let some weeks go by, and then I'll tape again. But they make a really lovely tape for children that is goes around the mouth that keeps the mouth yeah. closed, but doesn't make them feel unsafe. So exactly, my daughter do it every day. Yeah, now for to 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 improve her uh, teeth and yeah. 
everything. Like, it's unreal. Like it's James Nestor's book, Breath, is really talks a lot about the human facial structure and how we our faces grow forward and wide in the right way and our teeth come in more straight and all of these things happen correctly. And we start breathing nasally only as a child and don't mm -hmm. to the mouth unless we really, really need it. So I think it's an important thing to condition ourselves to do. It's never too late. You're never too old to start doing it. You mm -hmm. especially can improve nitrous oxide uptake, which is a vasodilator, which just helps so many systems in the body and all the way down to sexual health. Like it's really, really great um, practice. And, you know, breathing makes your cells better. Your cells are better. Your body functions better. You can do everything else better, right? On a cellular level. So it's pretty, it's pretty kick-ass. And so I think nasal breathing is a, is a big proponent. Maybe throwing themselves in a cold shower if they want to see how it is. Um, someone, I had a client this morning text me and she said that she had, she's just starting her cold shower series right now. And so she just texted me this morning I want to say it exactly. She said, wow, these cold showers really take your breath away. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's like a moment of a good practice to sort of shift your state, to pay attention to your nasal breathing in the shower while the cold water is hitting you. You know, it's like if I have recommendations that are general around food, I think it's always about really clean eating, not processed food and understanding what your daily caloric intake or your daily macro intake should be to keep you optimally well. Um, what about sauna? What about sauna? How often uh, you should uh, go? I love the sauna. I think you know. I think it's a little different between men and women. And the way I advise my clients is that I think men could get in the sauna or the ice every single day without any issue. I think for women we have to be slightly more careful, especially if we are cycling females. You know, mm -hmm. from the time we have our mm -hmm. menstrual cycle until the time it's gone, the the you know anything that's that's in a healthy cycling age. I, typically right from age 12 to 50 or whatever it might be that, you know, two to three times a week, cycling some high contrast, meaning just really hot, really cold temperatures, I think is totally fine. Again, I'm not a doctor, but generally speaking, I think if we do it every single day and I have experienced and seen anecdotally a little bit of the literature, but it's like, it can shift your hormones. So if you're dealing with estrogen dominance or hormone issues or perimenopause, it's like getting in the ice or the sauna every single day doesn't necessarily serve it seems to me it doesn't necessarily serve us as well as it's a bit easier for males to do that more often because similar to fasting because it's like we have a hormone profile that fluctuates day to day hour to hour and and we need to care for that right we need to care for that in a different way so it's our superpower but we also have to be gentle with it yeah and so uh, my last question what uh, is the ultimate boy hug for women how do you think what is the ultimate biohack for women? I, I'm going to say this thing that I've been saying a lot, which is day six. And again, it's slightly different a little bit because everyone cycles a little different timing, but about day six of your cycle. So if like the first day that you have your period is day one, around day six to day 12 or 14, you have this estrogen spike that for in hundreds of studies since the 80s, has shown that you can build, it's, estrogen is anabolic, so it, it builds muscle. And so it is, these studies have shown that we can build like 35% more muscle during mm -hmm. those days. Very and so, so, so special, uh, special period out, when you can build your muscles much more easier than other days. Yeah? It's like right after your period ends, yeah, like that, that estrogen incline starts and mm -hmm. that release is anabolic mm -hmm. and you know there's some other balancing factors in there but that all of that estrogen in your body is like that's the time that i go hardest at the gym it's when i'm strength training the most it's when i'm lifting weights it's when i have a higher mm -hmm. level of frequency because it's 35 percent more than the other part of your cycle so you know julia that if i was a dude and a uh, hundred years or, you know, in the eighties, when these reports came out, if we told men that there were 10 days a month, they could build 30 up to 35. Some of them say 44%, but that seems insane. But if we said you could build 35% more muscle during these 10 days, there would be like 400 programs that were like the 10 day maximum muscle program. You know, like we just haven't, we haven't, we don't have that relationship with building muscle that maybe traditionally has been, you know, in the, in the, in the male physiology or in the male world. And so I really lean on the people I'm working with to capitalize on their cycle to be able to build muscle mass because 
it won't make you huge depending if that's your goal or not. It's like you build more muscle and more muscle on the body, more lean muscle mass burns more calories and keeps you going and keeps you targeting towards your goals, whatever you're trying to do. Maybe you're just trying to build muscle. Maybe you're trying to have fat loss, but either way it can get you healthier. Right? So I think it's an important thing. And, and if I was to say, what's the number one biohack and the reality is that apart from your gym membership or whatever you're doing at home to work out, just knowing when your cycle is tracking it and then doing that kind of fitness routine around those times of your month are uh, it's, it's basically free, right? It just requires discipline. And so I love that because it's not a wildly expensive proposition. Yeah, thank you very much. It's easy to do. <laughs> just, <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> just to check the days and to do it. <laughs> it's simple, but it's not easy because yeah. we still have to go through the workout. <laughs> yeah, you are correct. It's uh, simple, but not easy because, uh, self because of self-control and yeah. Yeah. Mindset. Mindset. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so do you know we believe that biohacking is powerful and can make positive changes for each individual. That's why we are working on educational and inspiring program, and uh, we are so excited to have such many speakers and you as a speaker. And uh, let's uh, remind that uh, for those who cannot join us at the location, it is still an opportunity to watch live stream all day. So please watch live stream, get your access with 50% discount by link under this video, promo code biohacker. Yeah, we invite you. We'll see a whole crew of people there. And then a lot of people I'm sure will be tuning in from the comfort of their own homes and, you know, having their bulletproof coffees or whatever they're doing while they're, <laughs> while they're sitting and watching the whole event. So that's really lovely that you guys are doing it in both in both styles.